All right, if you've made it this far, congratulations. If you've made it this far and haven't thrown your computer across the room or uh, sent me an angry email or canceled your subscription and told me I was a fuck face on Twitter, thank you, by the way, uh, for not doing that. If you've made it this far, you have successfully challenged your belief, uh, investigated counter arguments, looked at opposing data, you've thought of it in terms of probabilities and trade-offs, which is just honestly a better way to look at everything, in my opinion, and you've thought very hard about the identity and validation and, and emotional stability you derive from the belief and questioned whether it was worth it or not. So that's it. That's the course. Did you change your mind? I don't fucking care. Did you not change your mind? I don't fucking care. Was it useful? I mean, it should have been useful. I do care about that, but that's it. I mean, you probably should have figured out by now that pretty much every course in this school is like improperly named. This is not about changing your beliefs. It's about updating, improving your beliefs, having better beliefs, having higher resolution beliefs, having more nuanced beliefs, having a better understanding of your beliefs and why you have those beliefs. This is how changing beliefs actually happens. So it's very, very rare to like come across an experience or a piece of information in your life that completely makes you do a 180 on one of your beliefs. It's very rare, it almost never happens. And if it does happen, it's usually an extreme event like 9-11 or the pandemic or, or something like that. It, like, that to, it needs to be something very, very major to change your worldview in, in a significant way. Most of the time, the way our beliefs change is that they are gradually altered, opened up, you know, little holes poked here, your mind's changed by a little detail there, you read a book that makes you consider something you didn't quite consider before, so you update your prior belief a little bit and you kind of pivot a little bit, maybe it's 10% more in this direction instead of that direction, and things just gradually open up more and more, and then you suddenly you find yourself not only being open to counter arguments, but actually kind of empathizing and understanding counter arguments in a way that you never did before, and boom, one day you just realize you're like, oh, I don't believe that old thing anymore, or at least not as much as I used to, like I, I'm, not like a, I'm not like a zealot about it like I used to be. Belief changes are gradual. They tend to be long-term and they tend to be nuanced. <laughs> it, it tends to be, it's not that you go from like hardcore socialist to hardcore capitalist in a week and you go from like 100% to 100%. It's like, there's like a very gradual process that happens and you start to understand like, hmm, okay, well maybe in that, those sectors of the economy, a market system makes more sense. And, and maybe if these certain conditions are true, then socialism would fail. And yeah, maybe maybe I, I'm, I'm only partially on board with this because now I believe that. And you know, I never understood that before. It's a very open-ended, messy, process that happens. And the problem is, is that our, our short dialogues online, you don't get to express all that nuance and messiness that is going on inside of our heads. Because look, like the better you get at this, the better you get at poking at beliefs, questioning beliefs, thinking of beliefs in terms of probabilities rather than absolutes, the better you get at thinking of things in terms of trade-offs, you start to notice something, which is that pretty much all your beliefs are held pretty lightly. It's interesting, I started blogging in 2008, and originally I, just, I was just blogging about my own life. Like I wasn't really giving any advice or telling people what to do or anything. But because I was writing about my own life, people started emailing me, asking me questions, asking me, you know, what would I do in this situation? What would I do in that situation? And that's when I really started to study psychology and relationships and emotions and all these things, just so that like I could fucking answer these people, <laughs> that I would like actually know what I was talking about. And it's funny because very early in my career, I used to make extremely bold statements. You know, like I'd go read one book about emotional attachment and then I would come back to my blog and I would write this like super strong fisted, declaration of like how relationships are supposed to be. And then a couple of years go by and I start interacting with more and more people and I hear different stories and I'm exposed to different cultures, people all over the world, I start talking to people older than me and I start having more experiences myself and suddenly I start realizing like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, maybe, maybe I should like lighten up a little bit on that statement. Maybe, uh, maybe we revise that one, cut out a couple of those sentences and uh, write in some caveats, put in some parentheticals, make it clear that, uh, you know, sometimes 
this stuff is 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 personal and you can't just make one grand declaration then a couple more years went by and i started to really understand that wow most of this stuff is so individual it's almost impossible to make single grand declarations that are not highly abstract and philosophical and then these days i just i i've basically come to accept that i have no fucking clue what's going on and it's funny because i've been studying this subject for 13 years and the more i study the more lightly i hold my beliefs the more easily my beliefs change when new data and evidence arises or or actually let's be honest when we find out that that study everybody referenced from 20 years ago was bullshit. These days, I, I actually, it's very difficult for me to come out and make a, a really strong declaration. And what you have probably noticed in this school is that each course is very much about a, a fundamental principle, either psychological principle or philosophical principle that is quite timeless, that's been around for hundreds or thousands of years and is widely applicable. There's no course here on the 10 best things to text somebody you think is cute. Like it's, we're talking about resilience, we're talking about boundaries and relationships, we're talking about managing emotions. Like these things have not changed over thousands of years and so it's kind of the only things that I've found that I can rely upon. You know, it's like, okay, this rug's not gonna get pulled out from under me like a lot of the recent psych research has been having. So all this is to say is that the more you understand things, the more you go use these tools and go through these processes and re reevaluate the things that you believe, you're gonna find that you're gonna have fewer and fewer beliefs. You're gonna have fewer and fewer strong opinions. And that's great that just opens you up even more and creates even more space for you to learn and grow and understand people. I don't see anything wrong with that at all. It's, it's, a, it's basically training yourself to become comfortable with uncertainty. There's a famous quote from Socrates where he says, the wise man knows that the only thing he knows is nothing. I think what he's kind of describing there is this process, is that like the more you learn and the more experienced you get, the less willing you are to make strong statements about anything. And I think that's great. I think we need more of that in this world. I think we need more uncertainty. I, need, I think we need more comfort with that uncertainty and, and more comfort with being uncertain with our own beliefs. So hopefully you've loosened yourself up throughout this course. You're experiencing more mental flexibility. And I will say if, if some strong emotional reactions came up or if you suddenly find yourself very, very nervous to talk about these things with other people in your life, I would check out the Healthy Relationships course. I would check out the Managing Emotions course because again, beliefs often get tied up into aspects of our identity that affect self-esteem and relationships. So the last exercise is I, I simply want you to write down, has your belief shifted at all? I want you to, to look back at the beginning of the workbook, look at the belief you wrote down, and then write down what you believe now and just compare the two. See, has it shifted? Has it changed? Has it opened up more? Has it become more nuanced, more detailed? Or are you more certain than ever before? In which case, great. At least now you've exposed yourself to the counter arguments. Hopefully you've gotten a lot from the course. This is absolutely a course to do again and again because we all have no shortage of dumb beliefs that we, we struggle to let go of or to reconsider. So I hope to see you here again. And until next time, this is Manson. I'm out of here.